Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel today. I'm sitting down to tell you guys about my natural hair care routine. So many of you over on my Instagram have been asking me for this for years and I'm finally sitting down to do it today. I have been up and down and around with my hair um, and it's finally getting longer, stronger, thicker and even my greys are disappearing and this is completely naturally everything that I've done has been a natural approach so before I jump into today's video guys as always remember to subscribe to my channel hit that bell so that you get notified of my new video every Sunday and don't forget to come say hey over on Instagram it's at honestly I'm Sandra so let me tell you my all natural hair care routine so guys, the first thing and most important thing, I can't stress it enough, is what you are putting into your body, what you are eating, what you are drinking, what you are thinking. This is all gonna have an effect on your hair. Your hair is a reflection of what is going on inside your body. So we need to make sure that it is good. So things that you need to be having more of are fruits and vegetables and water. You need good protein from things like chia seeds and flax seeds and amigas, again from chia seeds and hemp seeds. These are all clean proteins and clean amigas that your body understands and will process efficiently, resulting in your hair being fed properly. So guys, it isn't a quick fix, it is a journey. I have been through so much with my hair, that will have to be a whole other video. If you guys want me to share my hair story, then comment below. I've literally been blonde, I've had poor hair extensions in, I've lost my hair. I've then gone from a normal diet to a plant-based diet and my hair has thankfully got better and better. So if you guys wanna hear that, comment below and I will do that in a separate video. But my hair literally would not grow from there until I changed what I was putting in there. And that is the bottom line. So you wanna be avoiding damaging and congestive foods, guys. So anything that comes in a packet that's processed, that has chemicals, ingredients in it that you can't even pronounce, they need to be avoided because if you don't know what they are, your body doesn't know what they are. That your body will not know what to do with them. You also wanna be avoiding congestive foods like dairy. It is one of the most congestive foods that we could eat. Meat as well, these are foods that slow our digestive system down. It puts a lot of pressure on our digestive system. So our hair, skin and nails ends up at the back of the queue because our body has to deal with everything else that is going on. So light foods guys, nuts, and seeds are amazing for your hair, particularly pumpkin seeds. I eat so many of them, they're in my smoothie bowls every single morning. Um, lots of water, hydrate, 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 and like I mentioned, proteins, omega-3s and omega-6s. You can even get omega-7s in buckthorn. I don't know where you can get it from here, but I remember in Poland, I get buckthorn juice. It's absolutely disgusting, I'm not gonna lie to you. But within that, you get your omega-3, 6, 9, and 7. So these are all beautiful things for your hair. So I just wanted to start with that guys, because honestly, you can do all this stuff that I tell you afterwards, but if you're not doing this part, it's just not gonna work. Because essentially, we are what we eat, and that is the bottom line. And the minute you can get your head around that, the easier all this sort of stuff will come to you, and your hair will grow, and your skin will glow, and your nails will come strong. It all comes down to what we are feeding our bodies. Okay guys, so this next one is an absolute game changer. I came across this about a year ago and since taking it, oh my God, my hair is just out of control. I actually need to stop taking it sometimes because my hair just gets too heavy, but it's MSM Flakes. And for those of you that don't know what it is, it's a natural occurring mineral that is found in plants, animals and humans. And as we age, this sulfur starts to diminish and that's why our hair becomes weaker and falls out and goes gray and our skin gets dull and we have problems with our joints. So we need to be putting that sulfur back into our bodies. And that is what MSM flakes are. So I get these ones from Kiki Health. I always rave on about Kiki, they are just the best. Everything that I take is from Kiki. But with MSM flakes, you need to make sure that you are buying the flakes, not in a pill form. It needs to be high quality and organic flakes, guys. So if you're not buying this one, then 
you have to look for that. I will link this product below for you guys. And I also have a 10% off code with Kiki Health that you can use, it's at Honestly Alessandra. So please guys, take advantage of that and use it. But I promise you this guys, it is just a game changer. And it doesn't stop there guys. So when you take MSM flakes, if you add it to vitamin C, natural vitamin C, it strengthens it by 10. What I do is I will, I've got one here. <laughs> What I do is I blend oranges and I will just put a teaspoon in there. I do it with grapefruit juice too, but anything that has vitamin C in it, guys, you can mix it with that. So dose-wise, you start off with about half a teaspoon once a day, then you would take that up to half a teaspoon in the morning and half a teaspoon in the evening. After a few days, so you do the teaspoon, one teaspoon a day for a few days, then you up that to two half teaspoons a day, and then you wanna up it to a teaspoon in the morning and a teaspoon in the evening. And you can keep that going for a while. I, that's what I did. And now I just do a teaspoon a day with orange juice. And my hair, seriously, it just gets out of control. I really do have to stop sometimes because it just gets so heavy. Like when I put it in a bun, I just feel like my head's gonna drop off. So this is something that you could do for a while and then stop and then do again. I've done that and it's absolutely fine. Um, it doesn't taste the best, but you can't really taste it when it's with the orange juice. And like I said, remember guys, make sure that you're blending it fresh. Don't just get a carton. Going back to my first point, nothing that is processed or has any chemicals in it. You just want 100% of the fruit. So just blend it yourself. It's so much easier, buy an orange, grab one of these and put your teaspoon in and you are good to go. This is roughly about 10 pounds, so it's really inexpensive. And like I mentioned before, you get my 10% off code as well. So guys, it's really just worth doing. And I promise you, your hair is just going to be amazing. And not to mention your skin, your nails, and if you have any joint issues, then this is gonna really, really sort you out. Okay, now that I've spoken about everything that I do internally, which is very important, like I mentioned, I'm gonna move on to what I put on top of my hair. So something I've been doing a lot recently, every day, even if my hair is clean, even if I finish styling it, I will apply oil to the ends of my hair. So particularly when your hair gets quite long, I have been guilty in the past, guys, of just abandoning my ends and not really taking care of them. And it is so important because if you don't, when you comb, they just split, 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 and they'll just look tatty at the end and then you've got to cut them off. So you'll never get that hair growth. So I found that you need to use a lighter oil. So I tried to do this originally with coconut oil and it's just too heavy. And when my hair styled like this and I've just washed it, I don't want it to look greasy and dirty. So that didn't work. So what I found was just a lighter oil. So this one, I'll have to find it and link it for you. Actually, Nadia, the lady that does my laser hair removal, gave this to me to try because of, for my skin. And it's completely natural. And of course you can put it really anywhere. So this has almond, coconut, argan, jojoba, rosehip, lavender, orange, frankincense, chamomile, neroli, tea tree, and rose in it. So many amazing ingredients for your hair and your skin. So basically what I do, once I finish styling my hair, I will take literally, I'll show you how much I'll take. It's literally just a couple of drops onto the palm of my hand. And then I warm the oil up in between the palms of my hands. And then I will just lightly, I'll have to stand up because you can't see the ends of my hair. But I will lightly just run the oil through, particularly the ends and I'll just really, really try and apply it onto the very ends where it is the driest. And I will do that every single day, every single day. Even when my hair starts to get dirty, even if I'm wearing it in a ponytail, it doesn't matter. After I've applied my skincare, my lip care, my eye care, I do my hair care and it's just become a bit of a ritual. I don't do it twice a day, I just do it in the morning. Um, and. I've just found that the ends of my hair are just getting thicker and bouncier. I'll also take the remainder of the product when there's hardly anything left on my hands, so I don't want the top to look too greasy, and then tame the, um, the flyaways. 
so it also does that as well and this is all natural and it's so nice it smells amazing and it's literally healing and repairing and strengthening your hair whilst it's on Moving on to hair brushing, I wish somebody had given me a heads up when I was younger about not brushing my hair when it is wet. If you still brush your hair when it is wet, stop. Do not do that anymore. Don't brush it when you're in the shower, when you're putting conditioner, don't brush it when you come out. Your hair when it's wet is so fragile and can lead to major breakage of your hair strands. Basically, each hair strand becomes quite elastic -y, like quite stretchy. And obviously when your hair's wet, it becomes quite knotty and you're pulling and pulling and the hair strands are literally snapping. So it's something you need to stop doing. I stopped doing this about three years ago, four years ago, and it has changed the game for me, honestly. So basically what I do is I go into the shower. If you wanna brush your hair before you go in the shower, that's totally fine because it's dry. But when you're in the shower, don't brush your hair. When you come out of the shower, do not brush your hair. All I do is I will towel dry it, just the ends, I'll just squeeze the ends so that I don't get the annoying wet drips on my back, especially with how cold it is at the moment. And I will leave my hair to dry naturally and I will not comb it until the next day or later on when it is completely dry and I need to style it or whatever. But I do not touch my hair when it is wet. I know a lot of the time you need to style your hair from when it's wet, but try and dry it at least 90% of the time before you start styling it. And if you can, 90% of the month, especially now that we're in lockdown, just leave your hair, let it dry, don't touch it, let it do its thing and deal with it when it's 100% dry. And I promise you guys, you will see a huge change to your hair. Another thing I do, which I have been taking complete advantage of since we're in lockdown, is completely smothering my hair in oil. So I use just coconut oil and I will literally cover my hair in oil. If you have time, if you want, it's good to heat the oil up slightly, not too hot, just very slightly. Um, and then I literally, I'm not gonna do it now, obviously, because my hair is clean. I will literally cover my hair. Sometimes I'll even just take the ends and dunk them into the glass of oil. Oh, that's literally soaking. And then I will plait my hair up and sleep in it or leave it in all day or even two days because if I'm not leaving the house, I will just let that oil really, really work in. And this is just so good for the hair. Again, it's softening, it's moisturizing, it's protecting, it's strengthening, it's doing all this amazing stuff to our hair. And like I mentioned, if you want your hair to be long, you really need to take care of it when it's long because it's essentially dead hair. So you need to keep it alive, you need to keep it moisturized and you really need to look after it. So yeah, so this is something I like to do. I'm roughly washing my hair twice a week at the moment. So I will do this twice a week. And oh my God, like at the moment, my hair is so soft. So, so I don't think my hair's been this soft for a really, really long time. And it's so nice. So yeah, you can just use any coconut oil really. Obviously buy it in glass jars. Organic is always best. So make sure you dunk your entire head in <laughs> coconut oil regularly because it's really gonna do wonders for your hair. Moving on from the coconut oil, when you have your hair smothered in oil and it's dirty, this is the best time to give yourself a scalp massage. This is a really effective way of stimulating your hair follicles and kickstarting new growth. And it's a really good time when your oil's in just to use that and massage it in and that oil will work into the hair follicle as well and heal your hair and soften even your scalp. Especially in this weather, dry scalp, you can get dandruff, it can get itchy. So that oil is really good to work in. So what I like to do is literally hang backwards with my head down off the edge of my bed and massage my hair. Do not use your nails, do not, you know, scratch or anything because that actually destroys the hair follicles. So you just wanna use the pads of your fingers and you wanna just slowly massage your head. It's just so lovely. It's really nice if you have headaches as well or you're stressed. Um, I like to even put on just some high frequency music or meditation music. 
Um, I've got some lavender ice spray. It's just a nice five minutes just to zone out. And then I'll just wrap my hair up into a bun and leave it there. So hair massages as well are something that I have been doing a lot of lately in lockdown and it really is working. Moving on to something that we may not necessarily think of or link to our hair, but it is stress. And I definitely learned the hard way. So around two and a half years ago, my nonna, my Italian grandmother, got cancer. She got very unwell and um, I moved over to Italy to look after her. So I was there for several months caring for her and it became extremely stressful. I obviously put myself aside to look after her and make sure her needs were met. Along with the no eating, no sleeping, um, the absolute trauma of watching this woman die, um, I neglected myself massively. It did not become apparent to me until I got home. So whenever you have a traumatic event, you're really stressed, you won't notice it in your hair immediately. It kind of starts to happen three to four months later. So when I got back to London, I remember noticing three to four months later, my hair falling out. So particularly in this area, like my crown, um, if I've got any pictures or videos, I will link them here so you guys can see how bad it was. But it all just started to fall out. And <laughs> of course that gave me more stress and more anxiety, which didn't help. So. I really, really had to calm down. I did a lot of breathing exercises and, and a lot of um, grieving and talking therapy. There was a lot that I had to do in order to get over the trauma. And I know that is like one of the worst traumas that you could go through. And, and you know, not everyone goes through it in that kind of way, but any kind of stress affects you in this way. Um, so I know it's easier said than done, but try not to stress. I learned from that experience that life is very short and it's a lot of things are just not worth your time or your worry or your, your, your thinking space. It's just not worth it. And if you, if you are a warrior, I used to be a huge warrior, especially when I got back, I used to worry about everything. I used to worry about the next person dying and what that would be like, it was just awful. But I've just learned to just not worry about anything unless it's actually happening. Because you're just wait, you're just losing time and you're just wasting your own time, that, that, your own precious time that you have here. So guys, stress, if you are experiencing brittle hair or hair loss or anything like that, it is probably linked to stress and you need to get those stress levels down. So like I mentioned, meditation, deep breathing. Um, something that really worked for me was CBD oil. I don't have any on me, but I used to take that a couple of drops just before I went to bed and that really, really helped me um, just kind of like let go. And I do still take it, not as often as I did at that time, but I do still take it maybe once a week or once every two weeks. Just do whatever it is that makes your heart happy, whether it's writing, whether it's reading, whether it's going for a walk, and do it as often as you can and try and put yourself first. Try and manage your stress. Because not only does it affect your hair, I mean, your hair, you know, your hair and your skin is the, the last part of your body that's being affected. And obviously I'm talking about hair today, but it does, have a massive impact on your organs and your insides. And this is how a lot of diseases come about as well. So guys, this is a huge one. Please manage your stress, try not to stress. It's just not worth it. And you will get through it, whatever it is, and you will be fine. You will always be fine. So some last bits about my hair, just general maintenance. I do not cut my hair very often at all. I probably cut my hair well, it's currently been once a year. Yep, once a year. But maybe two, maybe two, three times a year on a normal year, not a lockdown year. I know that a lot of people say you need to get your hair cut regularly in order for it to grow, but I just find that it just always stays at that length that I get it cut at and it never just makes it past. So I like to leave it for a long time and do everything that I've just mentioned in the video to look after it so that it doesn't split and break. The most I will do is I will section off this area where 
the, my shorter bits are. My hairdresser just showed me how to do it. Um, and I will just cut it to where I want just to keep, um, not my, my bangs, but they're not really bangs, but these parts bouncy and light and easy to style. Like I mentioned, I wash my hair about twice a week. I tried to do the whole leave your hair as long as possible, but I just felt that it had the opposite effect for me. So I felt like it really clogged my hair follicles and prevented hair growth. And my head got quite itchy and I was very uncomfortable. So my perfect time is sort of every three days, every three to four, four days I can push it. But that's ideal for my hair. I have very oily skin and hair naturally. So my hair, I've washed my hair today. Well, I washed my hair last night. Um, so it looks like this today and tomorrow it will already start to get greasy here and I will need to use dry shampoo if I'm going out or doing anything. Otherwise it would just go into a bun. That's how oily my skin is. So for me, that works ideally. If you have quite drier skin, you probably get away with not washing your hair as often. It just depends on your skin and hair type. So take that into consideration. Another thing is I hardly wear my hair up. I never have since I was a very young girl in school. I would always just have my hair down. I don't know if it was that I was shy, but I would like hide, I'd like to hide behind my hair. <laughs> um, or I just didn't want to sweep it up. But anyway, I've just never ever worn it up. And I know Stefania's had issues because she always used to wear her hair really tightly up and she's starting to have her hair recede in certain places where she pulls it. So she, when she pulls it up, she's got to like loosen it around the head so it's not so tight. So I've never done that. Even in my adult life, I hardly wear it up. If I do wear it up, it's very loose. I never ever put strain on my hair. I've done it a few times and it hurt and I don't know why you do it again. Obviously, if you have an event and you want to have a certain look, then yes, once in a while, but the majority of the time, just make sure you're not pulling the hair in any sort of way. And I think that's it. I think that I have covered everything. If there's anything that I've missed, comment below, let me know and I will get back to you or I'll just make another video if there's enough comments of things that you'd like to know about my hair and what I do to look after it or how I look after it comment everything below everything i've mentioned today i will link in the description box below as well for you guys and i hope this has been informative and helpful for you guys i promise you if you stick to all of the points that i've mentioned you will start to see your hair improve significantly actually if i can find a picture of well i can find a picture i'll i'm gonna add a picture here for you guys to see of what my hair used to look like. And I honestly thought it would never ever be like this again. This is how I used to have my hair when I was a really young girl. In fact, I'll pop that picture there for you as well. But honestly, the amount of damage that I did to my hair when I was young um, and the amount of stress that I've had in my life, honestly, I thought there was no hope. So it does work and it is completely natural guys. Chemicals only cause problems everywhere, anywhere and everywhere, especially on your head and in your hair. So please avoid them at all costs. That's it from me today, guys. If you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. Like I mentioned earlier, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'm over on Instagram daily. So come join me over there. And until next week, guys, look after yourself and look after your hair. Bye guys.